Welcome to another show, I'm Sid, and in today's video I'll be showing you how to convert MP3 files to M4A format using Audacity, which is a free open source software linked in the description down below for use in your Spark AR projects for filters on Instagram and Facebook. I'll also be going over some basic patch interactions that will enable audio playback and basically give you more freedoms than what is available in the music and sound section of the Spark AR library. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. Let's go. Okay, so I've already selected my audio file here. As you can see, I'm using Johan Brahms' Hungarian Dance Number no. 5, mostly because it's a classical piece and therefore in the public domain, but also because I used it in a previous video, my Thug Life filter tutorial, which you can check out in the description. I won't be going over how to download audio files from the internet, but I'm sure if you do a bit of searching, you should be able to figure it out. It's not too difficult. Uh, this is the main website for Audacity, uh, audacityteam.org. Again, links in the description. As you can see, there's a direct link to download on the homepage, and it is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. So if you hit this button, select your version, you should be able to download it pretty quickly and without any difficulty. Once you have the program downloaded, just open it up and it should automatically create a new project for you. Okay, here we are in a new blank window. We're gonna take the MP3 file that we have and drag it in here. You should see two channels appear, depending on the type of audio file you're using. This one happened to be stereo, but Spark AR only accepts mono audio files. So the first thing we're gonna to have to do is hit this drop down menu here and select split stereo to mono. What this will do is split our audio file into two separate channels, the left and the right. So now we can delete the one we don't want by just hitting that small X there. Next up, we're gonna hit that drop down menu again. And this time under format, we wanna convert from, it may be 32 bit flow, it may be 24 bit PCM, but Spark AR likes 16 bit PCM. So whatever format you're in, just make sure that you convert it to 16-bit PCM. You can also see these uh, format changes that we're making in this area here. So we have mono right now and 16-bit PCM, and we're also at 44.1 hertz, which is exactly what we want. If it's not that, you can come down here to the project rate and select this drop-down menu and make changes as necessary but 44.1 is right, so I'll just leave it at that. Now that we have that done, you wanna edit your file. Now you can export this as is and just have a full three minute audio clip playing, 10 minute, 12 minute, whatever you like, but I will show you how to edit the file. So if you drag over the sections that you don't want, then you can just delete them like that. And for example, if I want this audio file to be 30 seconds long, I'll just select everything after 30 seconds and hit delete. And now all that's left is what I haven't deleted. Uh, now if I drag the playhead back to zero and click it, then it will automatically start playing the track. I can go in again and make some finer adjustments. If you zoom in, then you can go, ah, oh, this has a little bit more dead air. I'll get rid of that too. And just keep adjusting it until you're happy with the result. Once you are, hit file up here and export and export audio. The shortcut on a Mac is shift command E. So hit that button, rename it to whatever you like. In this case, Hungarian dance. Make sure that your file type is set to M4A and you can leave the other settings as they are. Then hit save. This is where you can enter metadata tags. So if you wanted to add other stuff, but for the purposes of what we're doing, this is kind of useless. So again, I'll skip that and hit okay. And now we have uh, underneath our original MP3 file, this newly edited M4A version. Okay, so now we're back in Spark and I've created a new project here. The first thing I'm gonna do is take my M4A file and drag it in here. Now I'm gonna show you how to add some interactions. So hit view up here to show the patch editor and just drag it up so I have a little bit more space. I'll also go to 2D view and zoom way in on this guy's uh, eyes. So now what we're gonna do is add an object to our scene and we're gonna add a speaker. So scroll all the way down to effects and insert speaker. You can leave it where it is. You don't need to adjust that in any way. But what we're gonna do after is add asset. And uh, now we're gonna add an audio playback controller. This will be what allows us to play back the audio essentially. So up here in the properties tab under audio and this drop down menu, we're gonna select our newly imported M4A file so now when the playback controller is activated, this is the file that it will be playing. Now I'm gonna take our M4A file and drag it in here as a patch. I'm also gonna come up here to our speaker and under this audio section, you can select from the drop down menus as you can see. But what we're gonna do instead 
is hit this little tab and also make that into a patch. Now what we're going to do is double tap inside the patch editor and select single clip controller. And what we're going to do is drag out from controller and connect that to an audio player. Now from here, we can connect to our speaker and we can connect our Hungarian dance M4A up to the input audio clip of our audio player. So now we have a single clip controller connected to an audio player, connected to a speaker, and the input for our audio is the Hungarian Dance M4A file that we've created. As you can see, this does absolutely nothing because we have no way of triggering the sound. So the next thing we're gonna do is add a screen tap, double tap and add that, and connect that up to play. Okay, so now if I switch over to Simulate Touch, then you'll see it works just fine. Unfortunately, every time I click play, it just starts the cycle again. It doesn't stop it yet. And if we connect this up to this, it also will not stop it. It just breaks even more. So, so what we need to add now is get rid of that for a second. And we can add a switch and a pulse. And we can connect the turned on state to this play one. And this turned off state to this stop one. And I'll just move them slightly so we get a little bit more clarity about what I'm connecting to where and then this gesture state to the flip of our switch and now when we click play it pauses and carries on so now we have uh, a nice switch that turns off turns on and plays our music as and when we like so you can change the screen tap to something else you can have it trigger when the mouth opens or when you blink or any kind of gesture state, but for the purpose of this tutorial, it seemed easier to just use a screen tap. So yeah, that's pretty much the entire video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from this. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, share this wherever you think it's appropriate and subscribe to the channel because I do make regular tutorials. If you want more audio tutorials specifically, I might link some in the description. Otherwise there's a playlist on my channel with the entire collection of tutorials I've made. I also do live streams, so be sure to check those out if you're interested. Maybe you could catch me live sometime. And yeah, I hope you're all having a good new year. <laughs> it's only been one day, so it can't be that bad yet. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.